Martin Bronze, thank you for making uh, a bit of time to talk to us today about this new V2 vehicle to pedestrian system yes. that uh, you've been involved with uh, with developing. Um, it, it, you're with uh, your founder of Spectrum 59. Correct. Um, can, can you tell me first your involvement with the project, what Spectrum 59 is? Sure. Uh, Spectrum 59 uh, is a company that I founded last year uh, together with a partner and we are working on uh, creating hardware for, DS, uh, for, for V2X applications, uh, formerly, mainly based on DSRC technology, which is what we do with NXP. Um, it brings um, uh, connected cars together, but uh, we found that the pedestrians, the vulnerable roadside user, which is the you and me in traffic, uh, that we are still not protected by anything. So if a car comes along and uh, we are just walking there, uh, it could hit us because, or we could be injured because it just didn't detect us. Yeah. Well, so we thought, okay, how can we do this? And since these cars are connected, well, at least they will be in the future, we designed a product which is this one. Uh, it's a small chip, the NXP chip, uh, and what it does, it just sends out a message to the world on a certain channel. The car will detect it, and when it's detected, it'll start ranging the device, and then it'll know like within 50 meters or five meters or 10 meters, there's a bicyclist or a, a pedestrian walking or something else, and it'll warn the driver that he's engaging something which is well, hazardous. Yeah. On the other hand, the person wearing this tag could also be warned because, as we can see here, the red LED is blinking a bit. That means this bicycle, for example, is ranging me, which means it could warn me like with a beep or with a flashing light or whatever. Now, kids walk into school, they are prone to get hit by cars or whatever. Um, you just give them a tag like this and they are, it brings the awareness of the vulnerable roadside user to these connected cars. And not everyone has, you know, a exactly. Smartphone, particularly when uh, you know, you're, uh, you're you're young, or yes. perhaps indeed if you're working on a uh, on a work zone, for example. Uh, yes. You, you know, I'm sure that uh, it's not encouraged to you for uh, road workers to use smartphones, is it? So. Uh, well, you don't want them to look at the no. smartphone. Definitely not. No. no. So, so you so could use this for, for work zones. Absolutely. As well. uh, just imagine a roadside worker wearing his helmet. He's doing some construction work. Mm. This tag could be built inside his helmet or in his side his vest, and he would be visible to the cars approaching him from already kilometers away because the messages are being relayed yeah. or could be relayed. Yeah, and it would be a very, very uh, uh, safe and secure system. And the, uh, uh, it could also, talking about helmets, could go into a cyclist's helmet as well. Yes, absolutely. We've got one here. So this is the first prototype. It's just an example of showing how it could be. So we've got the tag in front of the helmet, the LED again, it's being ranged. So also the person approaching it could see like, oh, wait up, there's something ahead because it's being flashing. And you've got awareness. We've got, for example, a smartphone app here, uh, which could be a dashboard from a car, of course, uh, showing that there's, in this case, there's three tags in the vicinity. One is close, two are further away. Can you just tell me what's what's Coda's involvement with it, with this this, uh, this this new system? Yeah, this is really a next step after uh, being 15 years in this business on on B2X to now get more access and bring vulnerable users into this game, which was up to today more focused on vehicles like buses, trucks, uh, passenger cars, and so on. This is now the first step and the first solution which comes along which makes use of the V2X technology. We are using the message scheme of DSRC technology, 802.11p, which has been widely used in the industry. And this protects vulnerable users, for example, on bicycles or pedestrians. And this is a system that is now pretty much ready to go as we speak. You know, it is. Yeah, this is the yeah. premiere. We have the first systems here on the booth. And uh, we're very happy to show and demonstrate that this is more than a research project. It's ready for deployment. It's been used in other areas like in mining, where you have the same challenges to protect the workers on the ground, not to be hit by one of these huge trucks in an underground mine. So the same problems we see on public roads and the same technology we have applied there 
will be used and can be used from now onwards in order to protect pedestrians. So all we need really to make this work is a, is a connected vehicle, a DSLRC enabled vehicle, and then there's some of those on the road already, of course, Right. and, and more to come. And, and, and uh, are you are hoping for new partners with this and uh, uh, a new regulation from government even perhaps on, on the system like uh, this? Regulation would always help, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Um, if it's voluntary, it's, uh, there are some constraints in order to get it done. Even if the project or the products and systems have been proven and solid and mature, um, we do have an, an easier access if you are looking after aftermarket solutions, like on being used on public transport, on buses, fleets, where you do not have to deploy it or de develop it from the beginning and integrate this into the vehicle during the production phase. You can put it after the fact on the vehicle, and this would be a very fast and quick introduction of this technology to the market. You don't have to wait for a new car release from an OEM, which of course is needed too, but on short-term deployments, you can use the aftermarket units to get access to this technology today. That's a great point. Yeah, now, uh, buses, of course, are huge fleets. Buses, trucks. Managed from one central place and, and safety, of course, being paramount. And this is a, a system that could really save lives. You could see you could save lives straight away if it was deployed on a bus. Fleet. Oh, absolutely. Everybody has these horrible pictures in, in mind when you saw a bike scratched under a truck on the right yeah. turn or left turn. Yeah. So these things need to be avoided. We need to protect the drivers, the bicycle riders, the pedestrians, the kids. You can easily put this one on a bicycle, for example. We have great interest of bicycle manufacturers who would like to put this technology onto their bikes. Mm. So you don't have to put it on your helmet, you don't have to put it on your backpack. Backpacks, you can use it on a bike, mm. on a motorcycle. Fantastic. Right away. And coders, the, the bit that coder does, let's just uh, focus on, on, on that just briefly before right. we finish. But the, 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 what is coder's specific technology in there? The specific is that we have access to the lowest layer of communication. So we can use the technique and we can do processing of information which are not available if you go for standard software stack, a V2X stack. So due to the cooperation with NXP, we have access to a lowest layer of communication which we utilize and we can process data. And this allows us to build a very efficient, low-cost module which can be implemented on a wide scale. Juan Yu, you're from NXP, uh, and we've been talking a little bit uh, to some of your colleagues about this new vehicle to uh, pedestrian safety system. Um, and NXP is involved in this as well, I understand. You're making the chip, is that right? That's right, actually, Tom. Yeah. NXP is delivering actually the DSRC mode and chip for making actually the protection of uh, the vulnerable users or the pedestrians actually uh, possible in this case. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, and so, what are the challenges when you're you've got the you've got the DSRC chip? What what are the challenges of making sure that works properly? The challenges are actually and to really have the um, total system know-how that would actually allow. Um, you know, to come up with a solution that is so small that can actually be backed up by a battery and that can be carried over by the, um, you know, by the vulnerable road users. I think that is, in this particular case, you know, the special challenge. And you've overcome that. It's a tiny unit. That, exactly. That, that is, uh, it, it, it's self-sufficient. It runs, it has its own power. Um, it, incredible. And, and, and it's ready to, ready to use now. So this is this is a DSRC based solution. So what makes what makes DSRC good for this? There are a couple actually important things that make DSRC actually extremely good for this purpose. And first of all, I think you know DSRC is some production proven technology. So as you may be aware that the technology has been now in production at cars since 2015. So it's a reliable technology. It is fully tested. I think the second um, 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 important factor. Um, is the fact that um, you know the technology uh, would be um, backwards compatible with the next generation which is also an important factor because the technology will develop you want to make sure that the new technologies uh, will actually be able to um, um, talk still to you know the older devices probably on the street that are actually based on today's technology and the third one I think is really the technical um, the performance in terms of for example the latency right and in terms of the communication range and I think these are actually the important factors that make actually DSRC a suitable technology 
to be deployed for protection of the vulnerable road users. Absolutely. It's reliable, it's tested, and it's in, as you say, in vehicles already. Exactly. In exactly. production vehicles, and also easy to uh, um, retrofit the code of wireless boxes could be put in a, an existing vehicle as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So really a system that's ready to go and ready to save lives. Absolutely, that's why we are so excited about it. It's a, it's a very exciting uh, development and uh, I, it deserves to do very well. So thank you very much for your, for your time and uh, telling us a bit about it. Thank you as well.